What is up, everybody? Jake to Dangerously here. Once again, I am back to do my SummerSlam 2017 predictions. Now, of course, SummerSlam is this Sunday live on the WWE Network from the Barclays Center once again in Brooklyn, New York. Now, of course, uh, this is the 30th anniversary of SummerSlam, and of course, it is. it has been and always will be the biggest party of the summer, and this card absolutely proves that it's the biggest card of the summer this year, which, of course, if you do not know, there are 14 matches scheduled for this show. This is definitely going to be a five- or six-hour show, so you WWE fans like myself are going to have to keep up for sure. We got every title defended here, and this is definitely going to be a big show now, and this is definitely going to be a long video, so sit back, relax, grab something to drink because... Uh, um, just grab something to drink and keep yourself hydrated because this is going to be a long video and I hope you guys do enjoy. Now, of course, our record coming into this pay-per-view after our last WWE pay-per-view, which was, of course, Battleground, we had only our second losing record this whole year when it comes to WWE pay-per-views on this channel. We went 3-5, and five. so our overall record coming into SummerSlam this year is 43-25-1, so definitely we are looking to bounce back after that abysmal pay-per-view going three and five of course we haven't had a winning record at a smackdown pay-per-view since may which was backlash so i'm definitely hoping this is the pay-per-view to bounce back and definitely get that w's in the w in this card now of course um if you do not know my nxc takeover brooklyn three predictions are up on the channel as well today because of course nxc takeover uh brooklyn three is this saturday so if you have not checked that out Absolutely go check that out and this video as well. I'll have my NXT TakeOver Brooklyn 3 predictions in those little boxes at the end of the video. Now, of course, I do want to thank you guys. Um, want to thank you guys for watching the G1, uh, keeping up with the G1 Climax like I have. It was a great, 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 uh, great um, New Japan Pro Wrestling show. I cannot wait to do this. I cannot wait to do the, new, uh, the G1 Climax next year for sure. So, again, thank you guys so very much for... Uh, watching the G1 Climax, my predictions on it. Now, of course, we're at 152 subscribers strong, so I do want to thank you guys so very much for uh, supporting and subscribing to the channel. Of course, if you're new to the channel, thank you guys for hitting that subscribe button and welcome. And then, of course, my longtime subscribers, thank you guys for sticking around, supporting the channel. Now, of course, if this is your first time watching my channel and this is your first video, boy, you picked a real good one to start off with. Welcome to the Dangerous Lines. I am, of course, JT Dangerously, and welcome to the club, because this club is just whoop, whoop. again thank you guys so very much now of course uh, if you do want to know what's coming up in the month of august on the channel definitely check out my channel update as well i'll have that in the description box down below now other than that let's get right into these predictions of course these are not going to be in order i'm just going off with what i'm seeing and of course if you hear me say by any means that just means the champion wins by dq or DQ or count out and he's still a champion if I say by any means that champion that means it's a W in my book so just just to keep that in mind now I'm gonna start off with the first matchup it is the battle of the seven foot tall and you can't teach that featuring of course on one side you have the seven foot two over 400 pound big show versus of course the the uh, the seven foot tall and you can't teach that of course making his making his singles run now in the WWE. Of course, I'm talking about Big Cass. Now, of course, this whole thing started um, going into Great Balls of Fire, where, of course, we were the, the whole, the big mystery at that, at that time was who, who has been attacking Enzo Amore and Big Cass. Now, of course, um, Big, uh, big Cass, of course, um, first, his first person he accused was the Big Show. Then, of course, when we found out that it was Big Cass all along that it was attacking Enzo and then faking himself, faking on the ground that he was hurt, that en that Big Cass was doing it, then that just shook the tag team division. Of course, Enzo and Cass have been tag teaming since NXT, and they have, well, really, they haven't really done anything. They haven't won the tag team titles. They didn't do it in NXT either, so this was bound to happen, and I thought it was a good, I thought it was a perfect way to make Big Cass a single star. Of course, with Enzo Mori, and then, of course, at Great Balls of Fire, Enzo and, uh, Enzo and Cass had a match. Of course, en uh, Big Cass beat him, and then he has just been kicking Enzo's ass. And then who else but the Big Show comes out, sticking up for little Enzo Mori. Now, of course, uh, this is 
Big Show's eighth SummerSlam appearance. Of course, his record here is five and two, and his last win here was 2010. And there's only another person um, this year SummerSlam who won in 2010. I'll get to him in a minute. But Big Show hasn't won here since 2010, so he is he is definitely looking to get a. Uh, Finally get a win here. So this is a very interesting matchup. Coming from me, this is definitely a pass the torch match. Now, when I say pass the torch, I think this is a good way to pass the torch from the, a veteran to a young up-and-comer like Big Cass. And this is a good time to do it with Big Show. Of course, Big Show is definitely winding down. Of course, he is in the best shape of his career. But what has he done? Like, what has he done in the last 10 years? I mean, he's turned heel. He's turned face. He's been... Good guy, bad guy. It's just been that with the big show. So this is definitely a pass the torch match to the next seven foot tall guy uh, that's going to make it. And I think Big Cass is pretty solid. I mean, other than his mic skills, which are very suspect. I know Enzo was definitely the mouthpiece of that tag team. Cass definitely has the God-given talent. I mean, he's seven foot tall. and You can't teach that. So coming from me in this first matchup, I'm going to take... Big Cass to defeat the Big Show. So this will set up Big Cass as the new seven foot tall, uh, seven foot tall guy in the WWE. So I'm taking Big Cass to beat the Big Show. And now the next matchup, a triple threat tag team matchup to determine the new number one contenders for the Raw Tag Team Championships. Of course, uh, the three teams. Of course, the Good Brothers. Doc Gallows, Carl Anderson, the former Raw Tag Team Champions. Of course, the Hardy Men. Of course, Matt Hardy and Jeff Hardy. And of course, the last team, Dash Wilder, Scott Dawson, The Revival. Hashtag, fuck The Revival. <laughs> Just have to get that being the elite stuff. But this match definitely is definitely a contenders match. Whoever wins this will challenge whoever wins the Raw Tag Team titles on this card tonight between Sheamus and Cesaro and Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins. So whoever wins this will get a shot against them at the next, definitely at the next Raw pay-per-view. So this is a very interesting matchup. Of course, the, the Hardys coming back at WrestleMania, the biggest surprise of the year. Of course, them winning the tag team titles for the seventh time. And then, of course, the whole nostalgia. At, they're doing the, And then, of course, at Great Balls of Fire, they had a fantastic tag team Iron Man match. And then the next night after Raw... They were in a match with Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson. And then after the match, the Revival came back after, of course, Scott Dawson's... Uh, no, Dash Wilder's uh, uh, Shattered Jaw recovered. Came out, attacked the Hardys, made a statement for sure. And then, of course, the week after that, the Revival beat the Hardys. Uh, like, clean. So, this whole thing has been starting with the whole the Revival. Talking about, oh, this nostalgia out the Hardys is going to end. Because they're the revival, of course. They're good. They're, it's all fists, no flips. I mean, that's the whole gimmick of them. And then with the good brothers, Carl Anderson, Doc Gallows, just I just think they're there for the sake of being there because it would make it the match interesting. So coming from me in this matchup and who I think will win and become the number one contenders for the Raw Tag Team titles, unfortunately, I'm going to take the revival to win because I think we need something new. Of course, the Good Brothers have been the tag team champions and the Hardys have been the tag team champions. I like to see some new tag team talent to challenge whoever wins the Raw tag team titles tonight. So coming from me in this matchup, I am taking the revival to beat the Hardys and the Good Brothers and become the new number one contenders. Hashtag fuck the revival. And now the next matchup, a battle of two SmackDown superstars. Of course, it is the Lone Wolf and the 2017 Money in the Bank winner. Of course, I am talking about Baron Corbin versus, of course, he is the franchise of the WWE. He is the face of the WWE. He is the, of course, he is the free agent. He's the face that runs the place. He's the 16-time world champion. Of course, I am talking about John Cena, rapper dude, pants. Now, of course, this whole thing started after um, a match between Shinsuke and John Cena, where, of course, Shinsuke beat John Cena. And then after the match and after SmackDown, Baron Corbin came out and attacked Shinsuke Nakamura. Then, of course, John Cena came out for the save, as usual, because he's John Cena. He had to come out, make the save, and, of course, he AA'd him through the announcer's table. So, this is and this how this match started. Now, of course, when I talk about John Cena and SummerSlam... The only thing you got to say is, go on, like, 
Ugh. Because, of course, if you do not know John Cena's record here, and of course, if you do not know John Cena's record here, his record at SummerSlam in his career is 4-9. and nine. Yes, you heard me right. John Cena hasn't won here since 2010 in that, that whole Nexus match. That's the last time Cena's won at SummerSlam. He's been on a seven-year drought at SummerSlam. And, of course, this is his 14th SummerSlam. Of course, last year... AJ Styles beat him, which was the best thing out of 2016, uh, the last year's SummerSlam. But Cena coming in with a seven-year drought at SummerSlam. And I thought the Triple H one from um, 99 to 2003 was bad. This one, this one just blows it away. And then, of course, with Baron Corbin, he has the money in the bank briefcase. He can cash it in on anybody, anytime, any. He can cash it on the WWE Champion anytime, anywhere for up to a year. So... This is definitely a, prove, uh, a proven match for sure for Baron Corbin because it's you're going against the franchise, you're going against the 16-time world champion. So, hey, you want to make an impact? Here's your chance, Baron Corbin. So coming from me in this matchup, do I pick against John Cena again so he can continue this losing streak? Or do I pick for him and finally end this losing streak? Hmm. I am going to take John Cena... To beat Baron Corbin. I think the whole Money in the Bank winner usually always loses until he cashes it in. So I think this would be the best time to continue that losing streak for Baron Corbin as the Money in the Bank winner. So coming from me in this matchup, I am taking John Cena to beat Baron Corbin. And I'm not done with Baron Corbin yet in this video. So stay tuned. And now the next matchup for the United States Championship. Of course... There is a special guest referee in this matchup. Of course, it is the commissioner of SmackDown Live, Shane McMahon. Of course, it is between the former, the, the former United States champion and, of course, the new face of America, Kevin Owens, versus, of course, the reigning and defending and now two-time United States champion. Of course, if you know his music, you know who I'm talking about. Get ready to fly! Of course, that is the music of the phenomenal one, AJ Styles. Now, of course, this is the sixth match between the two this year. Of course, this whole thing started at Backlash in May, where, of course, Kevin Owens was the United States champion, and he beat... AJ Styles via count because AJ Styles' foot got stuck in the announcer's table. Then, of course, we go on to the second match between them. Of course, it happened at a house show at Madison Square Garden where, of course, AJ became the new United States champion. Then, of course, the third match at Battleground where, of course, we had maybe the, the bullshit ending, of course, with Kevin Owens winning the, uh, winning the title right back. Because of a referee didn't see AJ Styles' shoulders up. And then, of course, the the night after Battleground in a triple threat match with the returning Chris Jericho, AJ Styles defeated Chris Jericho and became the two-time United States champion. Then, of course, a, of course, Kevin Owens was not even factored in the pin, and he asked for a rematch. Then, of course, they had the rematch a few weeks ago on SmackDown where, of course, more controversy ensued in, in this match where, of course... Kevin Owens tried to punch out Mike Kyoto or accidentally punch out Mike Kyoto, and Mike Kyoto just went like like this because he he had to fake that he got punched and it was a huge botch. And of course, AJ got the pin on him, but Kevin Owens' shoulders were up at one, and but Kyoto counted the three, which was just makes this whole thing so controversial. And then of course, backstage, Kevin Owens was irate, saying, "I want a rematch." At, and then, of course, Shane McMahon said, I'll give you the rematch at SummerSlam. And, of course, Kevin Owens saying, I want a referee who's gonna, who's not going to get pushed around and make mistakes. And then, of course, Daniel Bryan said, well, you want, you want a referee? You got him. And Shane McMahon. And, of course, a, uh, Kevin Owens is not liking, not liking this. So, again, the United States title this year has been just the, the, between AJ and KO. I had so much high hopes for this match, but... Every the only good match we saw between these two one-on-one -on -one was the Madison Square Garden match. 
Everything else had bullshit finishes, bullshit finishes, bullshit finishes, and I hated it. And of course, um, both these guys are coming in undefeated at SummerSlam. Of course, Kevin Owens is 2-0, and and AJ won his debut at SummerSlam last year. So they're coming in both undefeated. But, I mean, I again, the United States title, also the United States title has changed hands three times at SummerSlam. The last time it happened was 2012. So... There's some history with the title change in hands, but it's been a while. But the whole, the whole, the whole idea of a dream match like Kevin Owens and AJ Styles having only one clean finish and the rest of them being so controversial just makes me sick. I mean, again, I love AJ Styles and I love Kevin Owens. I thought we we're gonna have classic matchups between them, but we just had uh, botch finishes, controversy, and just not working. And then now with Shane McMahon being the guest referee, and of course. Shane McMahon is the seventh guest referee at SummerSlam in its history. And, of course, when it comes to special guest referees, there usually means something big for them later. Again, we were, I was, and then, of course, we were assuming we were going to get Kevin Owens and Shane McMahon. But it looks like we're going to be getting it one way or another in this matchup. So, coming from me in this matchup for the United States title, I am going to take, of course, i got to take my boy AJ Styles to retain because... I, and I want a clean finish. I don't want no bullshit finish. Uh, I don't want no bullshit finish in this match. And knowing Shane McMahon, he's going to make a mistake. And then Kevin Owens is going to go ballistic. But I, I just have that funny feeling we're going to have a bullshit ending again. I just have that feeling. But coming from me in this United States Championship match, I am taking AJ Styles to defeat Kevin Owens and retain his United States Championship. And now the next matchup for the Raw Women's Championship. Of course, on one side you have the boss, Sasha Banks, versus, of course, the reigning and defending Raw Women's Champion, Little Miss Bliss, Alexa Bliss. Now, of course, this, this is a great Balls of Fire rematch, but there's also some controversy into this match. Of course, a few weeks ago in Raw, we had a number one contenders match between Bayley and Sasha Banks, and, of course, Bayley beat Sasha Banks. Then, of course, the, the week after, she had a match with, with Nia Jazz and injured her shoulder. So, uh, and of course, it looks like it's going to be, it looks like a legitimate shoulder injury. And it looks like she's going to be missing SummerSlam this year. And, of course, they had a number one contenders match on Raw between Nia Jax and Sasha Banks. Which, of course, Sasha Banks got it done. So, we're getting, so, I guess what the people wanted, the people got. I mean, they wanted Alexa Bliss and Sasha Banks. And... And I guess you know what? Hey, the world listened to you, but it paid. It came with a price with Bailey, and of course, a speedy recovery to Bailey. But again, I guess what the I guess what the people want, the people get, and we get it. We're getting Sasha versus Alexa Bliss. Now, of course, at Great Balls of Fire, they had that bullshit bullshit countout victory from Alexa Bliss, and of course, they were, they've been they Sasha Banks has been talking trash about her of course on Twitter raw talk so I think it was bound to happen this was going to happen Un unfortunately for Bailey she's the cat she's the she's the one cast aside because of an injury and Sasha's getting her getting her title shot so coming from me in this raw this is going to be a good matchup as usual these two always kill it so coming from me in this matchup for the raw women's title I am taking Alexa Bliss to retain by any means. I just think she's going to find another way to win that match. Definitely, there's definitely going to be some shenanigans for sure in that match for uh, in this title match. So coming from me, I am taking Alexa Bliss to retain the Raw Women's Title by any means over Sasha Banks. And now the next matchup for the Raw Cruiserweight Championship. Of course, it is another Great Balls of Fire rematch between, of course. Representing Titus worldwide, of course he is. He is harnessing the power of Tozawa. Of course, I am talking about Akira Tozawa versus, of course, the reigning and defending Raw Cruiserweight Champion. Of course, he is the king of the cruiserweights, Neville. Now, of course, at Great Balls of Fire, Neville uh, successfully retained his Raw Cruiserweight title over Neville, and then this has been this has been setting up on, of course, Raw and 205 Live, and then, of course. Uh, Kira Tozawa having Titus O'Neil as his hype man, if you will. Of course, he got uh, Kira Tozawa is, is coming in into this match injured. He's got an injured shoulder. Of course, with Titus O'Neil saying, "Hey, think about the bigger picture." Like he, of, of course, has 
uh, giving up for Tozawa, which is the wrong thing to do when it comes to Japanese wrestlers. You know how they have the fighting spirit, like a Hiroshi Tanahashi was fighting in the G1 with a torn bicep. Fighting spirit is real, people. And Titus O'Neil just doesn't get that. Because when you, like, and, and then of course, on 205 Live, Akira Tozawa defeated Arya Devari to become the number one contender so he can get another shot at Neville. Now, of course, with Neville, what can you say? He has been the most dominant cruiserweight champion on 205 Live. He's He's been the champion for, what, six months? He's won the title at the Royal Rumble. More than six months. He won the title at the Royal Rumble. He's beaten everybody in the roster, on the 205 roster. He's beaten Jack Gallagher. He's beaten Austin Aries. He's beaten TJ Perkins, Rich Swan, And he's beaten Akira Tozawa. So, coming from me, definitely, this has got to be the last time I see these two for wrestle because I really do believe there's only one guy in this division that I think can can fight on Neville's level. And I think that's Cedric Alexander, the most talented guy on 205 Live. And I hope he gets the next shot against whoever wins this match. So coming from me in this matchup, again, so, something could happen here, but I'm going to stick with Neville to retain his Raw Cruiserweight title by any means, just in case. And so coming from me in this Cruiserweight title matchup, I am taking Neville to retain the Raw Cruiserweight title by any means over Akira Tozawa. And now the next matchup for the Raw Intercontinental Championship. Of course, the challenger, he is he is a former member of American Alpha, a former NXT Tag Team Champion, and a former SmackDown Tag Team Champion. Of course, I am talking about Jason Jordan versus, of course, the reigning and defending Intercontinental Champion, of course, with his wife, Maurice, and his Miss Taraj. He just needs a turtle, and you got on Taraj. Of course, Curtis Axel and Bo Dallas. Of course, I am talking about The Miz. Now, of course, uh, uh, the, whole, the whole month of July was spewing about what is this Kurt Angle secret. Now, it could have been anything. Oh, is, it, is he going to come back and wrestle? Is it something... Something that he's got to retire from wrestling or something like that. And then, of course, we found out that he had a son. And and his son was not Chad Gable. It was Jason Jordan. And, and again, coming from me when I heard that, it was like, what? Like, and I was like, the best way I could say, but, but he's black. Like, what? And then, and, and I just thought when I think of that, if you've seen Family Guy, my black son. It's the it's the same damn thing. It's my black son, and Jason Jordan is making Kurt Angle's days the best that he can, but he's not a ninja. <laughs> but the whole um, Jason Jordan is Kurt Angle's son was such uh, was just such a stupid thing. Just but again, I have heard that the reason they did this is because Kurt Angle cannot wrestle this year, and of course. Uh, a lot of people were thinking he was going to wrestle at SummerSlam this year, but that he has not been cleared. So they went with their fail-safe and their second option, and that was Jason Jordan. Because they can say, hey, Jason Jordan is Kurt Angle's son, so he's wrestling for Kurt Angle. So again, Jason Jordan is talented. I mean, he's pretty talented. Uh, he's, his mic skills are kind of like... Of course, he had he did the whole Miss TV, and he was doing the whole Roman Reigns. I don't care if they boo or cheer me. Just the whole goody goody Roman Reigns promos, like when he said, "I'm not a good guy, I'm not a bad guy, I'm the guy." You know, the whole baby face, baby face guy like Jason Jordan. I, I mean, I like it, but it's just just screams Roman Reigns out to me. And then, of course, with the Miz, he is the Intercontinental Champion, and this title. This title has been this title has changed hands more times at SummerSlam. The, the Intercontinental title has changed hands 14 times. So Miz is definitely coming in with a disadvantage because the title has changed hands that many times at SummerSlam. So of course Miz had had Jason Jordan on Miz TV. Of course he was downgrading Kurt Angle. That they only did this because they wanted to have that sign up. They wanted to have that kind of heat. That Miz had with Daniel Bryan on Talking Smack, but it kind of just, yeah, because the Daniel Bryan thing he did on Talking Smack was amazing. This one was just okay. I'm just gonna insult your dad because he's a, he's from Pittsburgh and he's trying to reclaim former glory that he's never gonna get again. It's just the, the typical Miz talking, and then of course he's gonna. So coming from me in this matchup for the Intercontinental Title, 
I just think Miz has really done nothing with the IC belt other than hold it like a trophy, and he really hasn't done anything. So coming from me, something uh, we need somebody new. So coming from me, what a better way to have Kurt Angle's son become the Intercontinental Champion. So coming from me in this matchup, I am taking Jason Jordan to become the brand new, brand new Intercontinental Champion over The Miz. And now the next matchup. It is a very interesting singles matchup featuring, of course, the Demon versus the Eater of Worlds. Of course, I am talking about Bray Wyatt and Finn Balor. Now, of course, with Bray Wyatt, he's coming into another SummerSlam. And surprisingly, he's on a two-match pay-per-view streak. He's, he's won his last two singles matches out on pay-per-view. Of course, his last one was Great Balls of Fire over Seth Rollins. So... Wyatt is kind of on a winning streak on single, uh, one-on-one matches that on pay-per-view. So again, that's no that's that the world is not the world is not ended yet. So, but Wyatt of course has been teasing. He wants Finn Balor. He wants the Demon. He's saying I can play mind games better than you. And then you know the whole Bray Wyatt talking in riddles that go nowhere. And he's just looking for a fight at SummerSlam. And then of course you have. Finn Balor, who of course last year at SummerSlam became the first ever Universal Champion. And then of course the next night he had to forfeit the title because he got hurt in that match. So, and of course this is absolutely the return of the Demon. Uh, this is the first time we're going to see the Demon since last year's SummerSlam. Of course he's been going as the Balor Club, you know, the ja the jacket and all that. So it's going to be fun to see uh demon balor again now of course this is going to be when it comes to entrances these are going to be the shit this is going to two of the this is going to be two great entrances now match wise it can go either way like it's it's either going to be a good match a great match or a meh match so coming from me in this matchup between the eater of worlds and the demon i'm going to go with finn balor i think it would be it would be a snowball's chance in hell if Finn, uh, Bray Wyatt wins this matchup. That would just you know just stick it to the WWE fans. Oh, everybody wants Finn Balor to win, but he loses to Bray Wyatt. But coming from me, I am taking Finn Balor to defeat Bray Wyatt. And now the next matchup for the SmackDown Tag Team Championships. Of course, it is the former champions. The Usos versus, of course, the reigning and defending SmackDown Tag Team Champions. Of course, Kofi Kingston, Big E Langston, and Xavier Woods. Of course, it's the New Day. Now, of course, at Battleground, and maybe the only good match of that, of that pay-per-view was, of course, the SmackDown Tag Team title match between the Usos and the New Day. Where, of course, the New Day became, once again, the... Uh, once again, the tag team champions. Of course, they are the reigning, they are the longest reigning WWE tag team champions of all time. Now holding another another tag team goal, looking to become the longest reigning SmackDown tag team champions of all time. Then, of course, uh, uh, the night after Battleground, they were going to come out and have this huge celebration. You know, how Biggie goes, oh, like, and of course, and something that's never happened, and I'm surprised nobody thought of doing this, the Usos attacked him while he was doing that. Nobody thought of doing that. And the Usos are the team to do it. And of course the Usos. The best heel team. In the WWE on Smackdown Live right now. They are the best heel team. And they should be treasured like that. There are this whole Uso penitentiary thing. You know saying we're going to take your belts. And we're going to steal your catchphrase. Because Us all rocks. You know. This is going to be a fantastic matchup. I mean their matchup at Battleground was amazing. And then. So this one's going to be a good matchup. So coming from me in this matchup, I am going to take the New Day to win. I'm going to say this just in case by any means because anything can happen in these kind of matches. So it, it's definitely in tag team matches at SummerSlam because, of course, the tag team titles have changed hands six times. So just to be safe, I'm going to take the New Day to retain the SmackDown tag team titles by any means over the Usos. And now the next matchup, and now it is for the Raw Tag Team Championships. Of course, the challengers, they are two-thirds of the maybe the greatest faction in WWE history. Of course, it is the Shield, but it's not really the Shield. It's the Lunatic Fringe, Dean Ambrose, and of course, the WWE 2K18 cover boy, the architect, Seth Rollins. Versus, of course, the reigning and defending Raw Tag Team Champions. Of course, the Swiss Superman Cesaro, the Celtic Warrior Sheamus Cesarmas. Now... This whole thing started 
few weeks ago where, of course, um, uh, uh, Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins, of course, Seth Rollins has been trying to trying to get back to the good graces of Dean Ambrose, and you know how Dean Ambrose is. And, of course, he's trying to get back to being the, sh the brothers that they used to be in the WWE as the Shield. But when, when it comes to Ambrose, he's all about, you know what, you burned me once, you turned your back on your brothers to become part of the authority. I ain't going to forgive that shit. And, again, I don't blame Dean Ambrose, but it's, I mean, it's just, it's, I mean, he's got to let it go. I mean, that happened two or three years ago. And, of course, uh, Seth Rollins was getting, you know, berated by Cesaro and Sheamus. And then, of course, Seth Rollins beat, Cesaro, uh, beat Sheamus in a one-on-one -on -one match on Monday Night Raw. And then, of course, Cesaro and Sheamus attacked him. Out comes Dean Ambrose. Crowd goes crazy. And then they just destroyed Dean Ambrose. And then, of course, backstage he's saying, you think I wouldn't go out there? That would make me look like the bad guy. And the only bad guy I see here is, is you because you can't be trusted. Again... Dean Ambrose is the type to say, hey, if you scorn me, if you burn me, I'm going to make you remember it the rest of your life. And then, of course, you have Cesaro and Sheamus and maybe the best tag team on Raw right now. I mean, they have been dominant. I mean, for, for two guys who were wrestling in a best of seven series at last year's SummerSlam, they turned out to be a fantastic tag team. And, of course, fantastic tag team champions, the two times. Raw Tag Team Champions. So Cesaro and Sheamus have been amazing. So coming from me in this matchup for the Raw Tag Team titles, I'm going to take Cesaro and Sheamus to retain. I just do not see, like, there may, there's the, the Cesaro, the, not the Cesaro, the Dean Ambrose, Seth Rollins Tag Team it has so many cracks, it doesn't even know it has cracks. And the trust factor is just not there. And that just kind of tips the scales to Cesaro and Sheamus for being a very, well, like a very well-oiled machine tag team. Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose is just combustible. And of course, we could, and of course, Dean Ambrose is looking to become a Grand Slam champion if he wins the tag team titles. Again, I don't see that. I would love to see him turn heel on Seth after the match. That would be fantastic. But coming from me in, the, for, coming from me in this Raw tag team title matchup, I am taking Cesaro and Sheamus to retain the Raw Tag Team titles over Cesar, over Dean Ambrose, excuse me, and Seth Rollins. And now the next matchup, a singles matchup between uh, first-time opponents make, looking to rebound after their battleground losses. Of course, on one side you have the Bulgarian Br Rusev versus, of course, the Legend Killer and the Viper Randy Orton. Now, of course... This, this is the first time ever between these two, of course. Uh, they're coming off losses at Battleground, of course. Rusev losing to John Cena and Orton couldn't regain the WWE title from Jinder Mahal. So, then of, so they just made this match like, you know what? Rusev wanted a challenge. We're going to give him Randy Orton because Randy Orton's really doing nothing right now. Because, you know what? Give it to him. And then, of course, uh, Randy Orton is making his 13th SummerSlam this year. Of course, he is six and six. He has lost the la he's lost his last three uh, SummerSlam matches. His last win there was, of course, was a one on one match between Christian at SummerSlam 2011, and then of course him winning the WWE title in 2013. But it's been a while since Randy Orton has won at SummerSlam. Of course, Rusev is looking for something because WWE sure is not giving to him, just like they're doing with Lana. They're not doing anything with her. For sure. So, again, I don't really care about this match because this was just an out of a blue match. So, coming for me in this matchup, I'm going to take Randy Orton to beat Rusev. And now the next matchup for the SmackDown Women's Championship. Of course, the the challenger, she is making, uh, she is making her... Um, she's making her uh, fourth appearance at SummerSlam. Of course, she is the daughter of Jim the Anvil Nidar, part of the Hart Foundation. She's part of the Hart family. Of course, it is Natalia versus, of course, the reigning and defending SmackDown Women's Champion. Of course, it's all about the feel the glow, and it's Naomi. Now, of course, at Battleground, Natalia won a fatal five-way elimination match to become the number one contender for the SmackDown Women's Championship. And, of course... Natalia is all about prestige, making the title prestigious like it used to be. Other than now, um, of course, um, Natalia hasn't. Uh, Natalia is two and one at SummerSlam. She's looking to go three and one here, but this is her first title opportunity since I think the 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 end of twenty the end of twenty eleven going into twenty twelve. The last time she held 
a women's title was twenty the end of twenty eleven, uh, and then she lost it at the twenty twelve Royal Rumble. So it's been a while since we've seen the tie in the title picture. And then on the other side, you have Naomi, who of course has this is only her second title defense this year for the women's title. And again, I again, if you've seen my videos, I do not like Naomi. I think she's a very boring W uh, SmackDown Women's Champion, of course. And, and, of course, they made the title look like a fucking light bright. They put neon lights on the belt. For God's sakes. I thought we were done with this whole ch making the belt. Oh, next we're going to see it spin. Like we haven't seen that before. Now you put neon lights on it like a fucking toy. Light bright toy. And I just hate it. I mean, she is maybe the weakest SmackDown Women's Champion since, uh, since the title has been introduced to SmackDown Live. She is the weakest champion. The whole feel the glow thing, I can care little to less about. So coming from me, this matchup, of course, you still have the Money in the Bank. The Women's Money in the Bank winner, Carmella, waiting in the wings anytime, anywhere. Again, I don't see that happening here. So coming from me, this is another match I can care less because it's, it's, not, really, it's not really interesting with Naomi. And it's been way too long since Natalya. So coming from me in this matchup, I am taking Naomi to win and retain, yes, retain, her SmackDown Women's Championship. And now the next matchup for the coveted WWE Championship. Of course, the challenger, he is, he is, the, he is a former IWGP heavyweight champion. Of course, he is the former two-time NXT world champion. Of course, he is the king of strong style. Of course, it is Shinsuke Nakamura versus, of course, the reigning and defending and the 50th. WWE Champion, of course, accompanied by the Singh Brothers. He is the modern-day Maharaja. Of course, he is Jinder Mahal. Now, of course, um, uh, with Shinsuke Nakamura, he is one of five men who are making their first SummerSlam appearance and also challenging for the WWE title. Of course, the last person to win the WWE title in his smack in his SummerSlam debut was Brock Lesnar. So it's been 15 years since we've seen since we've seen a, ch uh, a wrestler challenge for the WWE title and make it and also making his SmackDown debut uh, his SummerSlam debut, excuse me. So Shinsuke is in Shinsuke is in some history here. Of course, he won he became the number 1 contender by beating John Cena. Yes, he beat John Cena clean. Clean, clean, clean. And he became the number one contender. Now, Shinsuke, of course, has been IWGP, multiple champions, IC champion, tag team champion, world champion, never open weight champion. Of course, the former two-time NXT champion, of course. And this is only his third singles match on the main roster. Of course, he beat, Bro he beat Dolph Ziggler and he, he won by DQ against Baron Corbin. But him being in the... In the WWE title picture, and only his third match on the main roster is saying a lot, and I can and and it shows that the WWE believes in Shinsuke Nakamura. Of course, he is the king of strong style. And then on the other side, you have Jinder Mahal, who of course has been the champion since Backlash. He's had a solid run. Of course, a lot of people do not like Jinder Mahal because they want him to just. He's been. I've heard people say he's the weakest WWE champion because he really hasn't. He, he's not really, I'm not going to say he's not really likable because it would be stupid. But a lot of people just don't like him as WWE champion, of course. And I, and I guess the WWE also thinks that because they're saying that he's going to lose the title. Uh, he's going to lose the title before SummerSlam. So uh, this is going to be a fantastic match. It's, again, one of those first times ever between the two. They've never faced each other one-on-one. -on -one. So coming from me in this matchup, I'm going to take... Shinsuke Nakamura to become the brand new, yes, brand new WWE champion. Because you can get a, a, a reaction like no other in that building if Shinsuke wins the WWE title over Jinder Mahal. Jinder Mahal has been a great champion, but I think his time is up. So coming from me in this WWE title matchup, I am taking Shinsuke Nakamura to defeat Jinder Mahal and become the brand new, yes, new WWE champion. Oh, wait. I'm not done with this title. Now, of course, the next matchup, which I have been, I have predicted. Of course, it is for the WWE Championship. Yes, you know who, you know what I'm talking about. Of course, 
the new champion Shinsuke Nakamura defending the WWE title versus, of course, the Money in the Bank winner, the Lone Wolf Baron Corbin. Now, what a time to do it right here to reign on Nakamura's parade. This would be the perfect time to do it, of course. They do have a rivalry, of course. Um, Nak uh, Baron Corbin attacked Nakamura at Money in the Bank. Of course, they had a match at Battleground, and then, of course, on SmackDown. So, what a better time to for Baron Corbin to just stick it to the fans of the WWE to take the title away from Shinsuke in his biggest moment of his career. And this is the best time to do it. So coming from me in this second WWE title matchup, I am taking Baron Corbin to become the brand new WWE champion and beat Shinsuke Nakamura. So once again, two title changes, two WWE title matches in one night. And now the main event for the coveted Universal title, which is a, it is a fatal four-way match featuring, of course, three challengers against the reigning champion. Of course, the three challengers are, of course, starting at first. He is the he is the former NXT champion. He is, of course, a former world champion or in two and multiple promotions. Of course, he is the Samoan submission machine, Samoa Joe. Then, of course, his other opponents. Of course, he is the he has won the Royal Rumble. He is, of course, the man who retired The Undertaker. He is, of course, the Big Dog. Ooh, ah! Of course, I am talking about Roman Reigns. And then, of course, the final, the final challenger. He is by far the best damn thing on Raw every Monday night. He is, of course, the monster among men. If you know who this is, you know who I'm talking about. <laughs> Strowman, the monster among men. Of course, they are challenging the reigning and defending undisputed universal champion. Of course, I am talking about the beast incarnate Brock Lesnar. Now, of course, the added stipulation to this match, if Brock Lesnar loses the WWE Universal title, he will leave with Paul Heyman to the UFC to face, of course, the UFC light heavyweight champion, of course, John Bones Jones. Now, that just adds a little bit more well, more to this match for sure. Now, of course, this is um, Brock Lesnar's uh, Bro this is Brock Lesnar's first title defense at SummerSlam. That is a dangerous fact. He has never defended the WWE title at SummerSlam. This is his first title defense. Of course, he, he beat Samoa Joe at Great Balls of Fire. Of course, he's... Um, then, of course, they had a number one contenders match between Samoa Joe and Roman Reigns on Raw. Braun Strowman comes out, and then, of course, Kurt Angle announces that it's going to be a fatal four-way match between all four men for the one title. Now, of course, uh, multiple man matches are always hard to predict because it's like you're going with, you're just going with your gut, and you got to stick with it. You can't just switch your picks. you got to stick with the one man you're going to pick. And let me just say this right now, out of the, out of the, out of the four men, Right now, I'm already gonna get. I'm already gonna take out Roman Reigns because that would make that would be the biggest mistake to give it to Roman Reigns for sure. So out of the uh, uh, so I'm taking Roman Reigns out. So I'm not picking Roman Reigns in this matchup. Now, uh, now with the three left, Braun Strowman, Samoa Joe, Brock Lesnar. Of course, Braun Strowman has been has been amazing on Monday Night Raw every Monday night. He is the monster among men. He is looking to become a champion among men and. Just the perfect, uh, the perfect, like, he does he does things that would blow your mind, for sure. And then, of course, with Samoa Joe, uh, this whole Great Balls of Fire thing with Brock Lesnar was so good. Maybe the best storytelling for, for Samoa Joe since he's been on the main roster. So, Samoa Joe definitely has a great chance. And then, of course, with Brock Lesnar, putting the whole adage, if he loses, he's going to leave. And, of course, he's done pretty well in multi-man matches in the WWE before, so he is definitely, uh, definitely looking to retain. So coming from me in this fatal four-way match for the Universal Championship, I am taking, oh my God, because I don't think they're gonna, I don't think he's leaving quite yet. I'm gonna stick with Brock Lesnar to win. Of course, this is a no DQ match. No, no point in saying by any means. I am gonna take Brock Lesnar to retain his Universal Championship. Over Braun Strowman, Samoa Joe, and Roman Reigns. 
And those are my SummerSlam 2017 predictions. Whew, I hope you guys did enjoy my predictions. Comment below who do you have winning all of these matches. I know that, uh, again, uh, who do you have winning the Universal title? Who do you have winning the WWE title? Of course, I'm predicting two WWE title matches in one night. Let me know in the com uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Let's have a conversation about it. Of course, I'm always on to see your comment, hitting that like button, and of course, replying right back to you. Because comments are always, always welcome on the channel. Now, of course, I do want to thank you guys so, so very much for watching this video again. This was a long video, and I hope you guys do enjoy it, and hope you guys, uh, and whoever and whoever else is doing predictions, good luck to you in your predictions. Now, of course, before you guys go, you, can always, you guys can never forget to do this. That like button, comment, share, which friends, of course, super kick! That like button like only you guys can, and of course, you can never forget to do this as well. That subscribe button become part of this bigger and dangerous, dangerous lines. And I will see you for my Mayweather McGregor 2017 predictions later days. And peace out.